The news at noon starts right now. A man and a woman in two different parts of town suffering similarly tragic fates, both hit and killed by cars as they tried to cross the street. One crash happened in Universal City, the other on the southeast side of San Antonio. Katrina Weber tells us why police have not made any arrests in either case. What had been a dark stretch of FM 78 now is brightly lit up by patrol cars. Universal City Police say it was in the darkness around 3 this morning when a woman crossing just east of Pat Booker Road was hit and or run over by as many as five cars. You have to be 100% careful because people do not pay attention. Mike Goresny came upon the scene a few hours later while on his morning run. He regularly takes on this busy road, not far from Joint Base San Antonio Randolph, but says he comes prepared. But I always wear a reflective vest, light, which I have off because of this, and a flashing light in the back. Investigators say the first two drivers involved in this crash stopped and tried to help the woman. However, no one could save her. Police don't believe those drivers did anything wrong. And they say the others who kept going may not have realized who or what they hit. San Antonio police couldn't say the same about another driver involved in a deadly crash on the southeast side a few hours later. They say that person kept going after the crash in the 200 block of South W.W. White. The man who was hit died. Witnesses described seeing him staggering across the street just before he was hit. In this case, whether or not the driver was at fault, police say he or she still may face criminal charges for not stopping after the crash. First, though, they have to find that driver. The only description police have of the vehicle is that it may have been an SUV. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a man accused of robbing and assaulting an elderly person on the northwest side now facing charges. Police say the man punched a 71 year old man, then took off with the man's things, including his jewelry. Booking records show that 31 year old Baldemar Dylan Valdez was charged with aggravated robbery. Police say back on December 4th, the victim drove Valdez to a Jack in the Box restaurant in the medical center and then to the apartment complex on Broadview for an on Broadview, arrest paperwork says that after arriving there at the complex, Valdez demanded the victim's wallet and a bag and then repeatedly punched him. Yeah, the man was hit in his face, his head and ribs. He ended up having to go to the hospital. Police said the suspect fled with the man's bag, which contained the jewelry. The victim was able to partially identify the suspect, leading to his arrest. Records show Valdez is facing several more charges unrelated to the assault case. We're taking a look with live cam at another really pretty day. Really doesn't feel like January out there. Not at all. We had a front come through this morning on my morning commute around 6 a.m. this morning. It did run into some rain. We had a little bit of rain here in San Antonio. Not much. In fact, nothing was reported at the airport, but there were some showers here and there. Those passed by pretty quickly. That front came through and now everything is cleared out. So let's uh, show you the radar and uh, satellite picture here and you can see the clouds, the light of clouds that represents where that front is located and it's quickly moving out of our viewing area. Uh, still seeing a few showers out there in Lavaca County, but those are quickly pushing east. And then you run into some heavier thunderstorms and perhaps some severe weather as you get up into far east Texas and parts of Louisiana. There are tornado warnings uh, with some of these storms and there is a tornado watch box that includes far east Texas. And this goes for a while longer as this line progresses east. The rest of Texas is getting the chance to clear out. but. On the back side of this system, we've got gusty winds. Winds now gusting to 25, even 30 miles per hour. Gusty winds combined with some very dry air means we have a high fire danger this afternoon for a large portion of our viewing area, even here in San Antonio, where we're not seeing strong wind gusts just yet, but I do think they'll pick up some as we head into the afternoon. So your case at 12 hour forecast, 76 degrees at three o'clock. We're up around 77 for a high today. A little cooler than yesterday, but not by much. 68 at 7 o'clock, where you will feel the differences tonight. Temperatures fall quickly by midnight. We're at 50 into the 40s by tomorrow morning, guys. Thank you, Justin. Happening tonight, the South Sand ISD School Board is holding a closed session meeting. Part of the discussion is going to be about permanently closing several schools. Athens Elementary, Kazan Middle School, and West Camp and High School are once again topics of discussion. You'll recall that the school board pushed to reopen the three schools back in 2019 and then Superintendent 
Alexandro Flores pushed against that move, saying because of their low enrollment, it would cost too much. San Antonio City Council seats up for grabs beginning this morning. Candidates began filing their intent to run this morning as well. The potential City Council folks are showing up this morning at City Hall a little after 8 o'clock to apply for a spot on the May 6th ballot. Both new and familiar faces looking to be elected. We are expecting most of the 11 races will have an incumbent. But after Councilwoman Anna Sandoval's resignation announcement, the District 7 seat now is wide open. The filing period for the races lasts through February 17th. More delays in the start of one of San Antonio's most talked about murder cases. The jury in the Andre McDonald case has been seated, but the trial for his wife's murder is going to be delayed. His defense attorneys presented some several, several motions. They want search warrants and electronic data from cell phones to be thrown out as evidence. These pretrial motions are expected to take a few days, so It'll have to wait for the actual trial to begin on Monday. His wife, Andreen McDonald, disappeared in 2019 after an extensive search. Her remains were found burned and buried in a North San Antonio field. We are live streaming these pretrial motions, and you can watch them on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, or KSAT's YouTube channel. Later this afternoon at 5, what Andreen McDonald's friends said on the stand about the couple that may be key testimony. San Antonio police need some help identifying and locating a suspect who shot and killed a man inside a northeast side apartment back in 2021. Police say that they were called to the shooting in progress at the Alamo Estates Apartments back on July 1st. The northeast side apartments are located on Walsham Road on Mid Crown Drive. Police say they found Raymond Sneed shot and killed inside his apartment. And during the investigation, witnesses told police that they did see a woman leaving the location. Investigators are looking for information on the suspect's vehicle as well. Anyone who's got information is being asked to call the number that's on your screen right now. It is 210-224-STOP. Overseas now where a helicopter crash in Kiev, Ukraine killed at least 16, including three children and Ukraine's interior minister, the most senior government official to die since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began. As ABC's M. Wynn tells us, this comes as the country worries about its infrastructure amid the ongoing war. Flames erupting after a helicopter crash near a kindergarten near Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, this morning. Officials saying at least 16 were killed, including Ukraine's interior minister, Denise Monastirsky, along with eight others in the helicopter and three children on the ground. Monastirsky is the most senior government official to die since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's a uh, young guy, very patriotic guy, do it a lot of things for Ukraine and uh, make it police reform uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky calling them patriots. Another 25 people said to be injured and debris scattered. This grandmother saying she barely escaped the nursery with her granddaughter. The cause of the crash is under investigation. This comes as Ukrainians are still reeling from the Russian missile strikes in Dnipro this weekend that killed at least 45 people, including six children. Kyiv's mayor sounding the alarm, warning the country's infrastructure is at risk of failure due to the repeated Russian rocket attacks. We don't talk about the collapse, but can happen any second because any second Russian rockets can destroy our critical infrastructure. As Ukrainian leaders plead for increased military aid, ABC News now learning the U.S. has withdrawn a significant amount of artillery shells from its pre-positioned stocks inside Israel. And the U.S. reportedly pushing other countries to send more tanks to Ukraine. These are sovereign decisions for each country to make. Today, Russia's foreign minister said the relationship with the U.S. would never be the same, adding negotiations with Ukrainian President Zelensky are for now out of the question. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. As another rough night for the Texas Longhorns, Larry Ramirez will show you how it all went wrong coming up in sports. An easy way to step up and help out our military men and women around the world. Take a look. We're here at Gun at Nissan. We're going to explain how you can do just that. And there is a quick and efficient way you can help out our military men and women all across the world. Gun Auto partnering with Soldiers Angels for Operation Book Drop. Max Massey now joins us live from Gun Nissan. So Max, we love our military, so how can we help out? 
Guys, there are so many easy ways to step up and help out. Before we get to that, though, take a look. Already so many books being donated, joined here with Ed. So, Ed, the question people ask, how can they help add to these donations? So they can go to any local gun automotive, either dealership or collision center, and drop these books off. So any of the locations. Okay. How long are you guys going to be doing this for? So we're going to be doing this through the 21st of this month. And why is this so important for you guys? Okay, so Gun Automotive has a long history of of military service and military support. And this is one of the many things that we do to try to help support our military heroes. Where do the books go? Who are you guys partnered with? So we're partnered with Soldiers Angels. They are a nonprofit local organization here in San Antonio. They have uh, volunteers throughout the United States and 31 countries abroad. So these books are going to be distributed all over the United States, overseas, military stations, um, combat zones and VA hospitals to help our recovering vets. As this is so amazing, do you guys have a goal for this year? We do. So first year we did this was in 21. We had a goal of 3,000. That soon turned into what are we going to do with 25,000 books because that's what the city of San Antonio was uh, generous enough to donate. So this year we've set a goal of 5,000, but who knows, maybe we'll end up with 30,000. Okay. So guys, it is so easy. Step up, help out, help donate. New or gently used books come to any gun auto location until the 21st and help our military men and women around the world. If you have any questions, we have all those answers. Just head to KSAT.com. David, Ursula, back to you guys. Thank you, Max. You know, there's nothing better than a book. I know we've got all these electronics, but there's still nothing better than opening up a book and reading a story. How about opening up a book and reading a story under a tree on a day like this? Mm. Man, you guys are going old school, but I like it. I like it. That's a great idea. You got the blue skies out there. It is really, really nice. We had that front come through this morning. Unfortunately, we did not pick up much rain at all. It was really light. Uh, so the aquifer is still falling down the tenth of a foot to 636.3. Not good there. Mountain Cedar jumped back up today. We've had some gusty northwest Julie winds. Looks like that number may be high again tomorrow. 1,410 molds are moderate at 690. What can we expect the rest of the week and those rain chances this weekend? Are they still there? We'll take a look. Coming up. All right, get ready for this one. Chocolates, flowers, lots of choices for Valentine's gifts. The San Antonio Zoo is taking it to a whole new level. How about giving a live cockroach or a frozen rat? And zoo staff members are going to feed it to the animals on Valentine's Day. Now, these are just some of the choices from now until this Valentine's Day that you can buy so that zoo staff can give your Valentine to the animals there. Maybe a live cockroach or some veggies. Well, that's about $10. A frozen rat is $25. Yum, yum. And (laughs) zoo staff are going to serve it up to birds and snakes and mammals to eat. It's called Crimea Cockroach. It's a zoo fundraiser they do every year. And uh, you get some... Uh, you get, kind of get back at your ex, perhaps. You do it in their honor <laughs> while also helping conservation efforts. Which really just goes back to the animals and our vision of securing a future for wildlife, not only here at San Antonio Zoo or in Texas, but all around the world. We have conservation programs everywhere, and this fundraiser helps contribute to that. So, some might feed a frozen rat to a snake in honor of their former paramour. And for those who may really need a satisfying revenge story, the zoo is offering upgrades. For 20 people, they include a custom voiceover on their critter feeding (laughs) video. And those cost $150. What a great idea. Hey, animals got to eat, right? If you are interested in signing up, we've got all that info for you on our website, kz.com. Look at that turtle just crushing that yeah. carrot. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I it's, love that idea. It's really brilliant as a fundraiser yeah. because I think people from all over the world do it. I don't know who came up with the idea, but it's, it's, it's brilliant. It so. is. How <laughs> else could you honor that person? <laughs> and help out animals all at the same time. There you go. Uh, you, uh, yeah, you look at both sides of it. But uh, anyway, we had a front move through this morning. And uh, it cleared things out. Now we're seeing a lot of blue skies here around San Antonio. As I said, we didn't pick up a lot of rain, which is unfortunate. Uh, As it pushes east, this storm system is producing quite a bit more rain. And we're seeing uh, quite a bit of severe weather now across parts of Far East Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. You got snow on the north side of this thing. Pretty heavy rain across parts of Missouri and here in Texas, or at least the western half of Texas. Not much uh, as we're on the back side of this. 
Uh, so uh, this storm system will continue to push east. We're going to get some pretty gusty winds on the back side of it. And then you notice there's the uh, severe thunderstorm or tornado watch box. I should say that stretches from Lufkin to Shreveport up to Little Rock. It's this line here and there have been a few tornado warnings associated with it. So there is the pretty high potential for some stronger storms today in these areas. On the back side of it, as I was saying, Red flag warnings in effect, high wind warnings out across parts of West Texas and New Mexico. Uh, this is probably kicking up some dust as it often does across uh, the Lubbock area and uh, far West Texas. And as we look at the wind gusts, it's gusting to 49 right now in Lubbock. But here around uh, our area, we haven't seen a ton of strong gusts here yet in San Antonio. I do think these numbers pick up some. Lost Maples, 26 mile per hour gust, 20 mile per hour gust in Kerrville. Gusting to 30 though in Honda, that's one of the strongest gusts we've seen. And you combine that with the relative humidity, and this is where we have a problem. So. Our threshold is kind of 20% when it comes to relative humidity, and it is forecast to drop below that number this afternoon and this evening. You combine that with the winds, and then you get the fire danger, and that's why that red flag warning is in effect, uh, not only across a large portion of Texas, but here in San Antonio and all of the whole country. Right now, this is the scene outside. It, it, it does look beautiful. We've got blue skies, 74. Dew point is at 40 and falling. North northwesterly winds at about 15 miles per hour and humidity is at 29% as it stands right now. 69 in Kerrville, 64 Rock Springs, 73 Uvalde, 76 in Hondo, 70s for Pleasanton, Gonzales, and New Braunfels. So this front didn't do a lot to cool us down much, right? It just really brought in the drier air. Uh, right around 75 here in the San Antonio area at this hour. Still seeing some 60s in places like Kerrville and Bandera. Uh, the case on 12 hour forecast. 76 at 2 o'clock, 76 at 3 p.m. I think we top out somewhere around 77 or so. But the numbers will fall off quickly this evening, 68 at 7 o'clock, down to 50 by midnight, and I think we're down into the low 40s by tomorrow morning. There's another look at this uh, big system here that's moving east, but we've got another one that's starting to take shape up across the Pacific Northwest. This is the system we're watching for this weekend. If you have weekend plans, this is something to watch, although I don't think it's going to be a big, big issue. It digs a little bit further south than our last system. And so by Friday afternoon, we're already starting to see clouds increasing. And then by Saturday morning, we should see a few showers around the area, around a 30% chance of rain. And I think the bulk of that probably starts to push east late in the day on Saturday. So Saturday won't be a washout, but know that there are some, or at least there's the potential for a few showers, uh, especially early in the day. 71 degrees tomorrow. Notice we start off at 41, 66 Friday, increasing clouds, 62 Saturday with that 30% chance of rain, clearing out some on Sunday. And then we have another opportunity for some rain Monday and Tuesday. We're keeping our fingers crossed that we'll see something that adds up to something. All this rainfall where it's just been a trace or a hundredth of an inch, we need a lot more than that. So uh, we'll keep you posted. We need a win in the rain department. We do. But we know the Spurs and the Cowboys won yeah. because Larry is still celebrating. <laughs> He's laid back. He doesn't have his tie on. He's I, I got chilling. busy and lost track of time. Uh, he had a lot to talk about. Yeah, I'm trying to look like the morning guys, you know. Relax I don't put ties win. on. Yeah, yeah. You've, had a, you've had a long week. I have <laughs> longer. Yeah, it's going to get longer. We're going to yeah. go to San Francisco soon for the uh, Cowboys 49ers game. But last night, Spurs Nets, Keldon Johnson scored a career high, and he did it by only making three three pointers. I mean, that's pretty unheard of these days. And in the NFL, Cowboys defense really kept Tom Brady down. Coming up. The Spurs got a much needed win last night, beating the shorthanded Nets, who played without Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Spurs rookie Jeremy Sohan scored 16 points, making six of his 12 shots. Josh Richardson came off the bench with the Spurs, and he scored nine points in 27 minutes. San Antonio led by as many as 14 points in the first quarter. Now, the Spurs' big dog last night was Keldon Johnson, fourth frame. Spurs leading by four. Sohan finds Johnson for a high arcing three, and it's good. I mean, that ball went out of the video frame. It was so high. Keldon scored a career high 36 points to go with 11 rebounds. Spurs win at 106 to 98, ending their five game losing streak. First off, um, I feel like, um, you know, it's why I play the game of basketball. I feel like I had it going tonight and I just kept going. Um, it's definitely a big moment, something that I, I definitely remember, but uh, 
you know, we, I just got to keep striving to get better. And, um, you know, my teammates and coaches continue to put me in um, amazing situations uh, to be successful uh, as a young player, as a, as a as I'm coming up in the, in the NBA. So, um, you know, just as much as it's me that is career high, it, it, it's for my team as well because they, you know, without them it wouldn't be possible. Yeah, you know, just a ton of energy, a ton of confidence, and, you know, that's who Keldon is. Um, you know, he's great. We all trust him, and, you know, he's going to do his thing. Spurs will next host the L.A. Clippers Friday night at 7. So the Clippers hosting the Sixers last night. Kawhi Leonard steals the ball and races back for a slam dunk. The claw led L.A.C. with 27 points. Back at the other end, James Harden will feed Joel Embiid, who fakes a three. Defender flies by. Then he shoots and nails it to beat the first half buzzer. He scored 26 in the first half in a game high 41 to help the Sixers win 120 to 110. The Clippers are 2 and 8 in their last 10 games. Number seven, Texas lost to number 12, Iowa State last night. The Cyclones will take the lead for good in the second half with this three-pointer by Gabe Klauscher to make a 52-51 home team. And the Cyclones protect home court 78-67. to Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys defense held seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady scoreless in the first half for the first time since his first playoff game back in 2001, and they did it in a number of ways. J. Ron Kurtz was one of the reasons for the early shutout, intercepting Brady in the end zone, and Micah Parsons had two passes defensed and a sack in the 31-14 victory and wildcard weekend in Tampa, the first playoff win for the boys since 2018. It was the defensive mindset this game, you know, how we was going to go about it, you know, how we was going to go about our work this game and just going out there and execute, you know. It didn't have a whole lot to do with Tampa Bay. Uh, it was more so what we were doing, you know, and I feel like we went out there and did what we were supposed to. We have to have that approach almost every time, and uh, we got to continue that. We, you know, we can't off the gas. Everyone was locked in, disappointed about that Washington loss. We need that same focus, that same attention detail, that same execution going into this week, too. We get to right our wrongs. Uh, we wrote one uh, tonight. We get to write, a, write another one tomorrow, so I meant next week. So, you know, it's all just about us doing our job. Like I said, uh, coming into this week, doing our job, reading our keys, getting our eyes on the right thing, and uh, we can go out there and play with anybody. Yeah, he's talking about going one and done last season against the Niners. Mm -hmm. And a quick question. Uh -huh. When Kawhi comes to town, Spurs fans, should they still boo him? Or is that Probably will. Is that over? The bridge? I don't no. know. Who's, what's his name again? <laughs> this is why everybody wants to be Larry, though. Look at he's cash. He went to he went to Tampa for the for World the dub for the Cowboys. Yeah. Comes home, catches a Spurs game, then he's on the road again. Sometimes Larry doesn't dub. want to be Larry. I don't think anybody wants to be me. Yeah. Man, are you That's kidding me? That's not true. Oh, I don't think so. My son will trade places with you. <laughs> ah, thanks, Larry. Capitol Hill, it's another battle over money. This time, lawmakers talking about raising or suspending the country's borrowing gap how their decision could affect your bottom line. And food poisoning, yuck. It is not fun for anyone, but every year millions of us get hit with a case of salmonella. Coming up today at five, 12 in your size, Marilyn Moore and shows us what the federal government says it's gonna do to try to reduce the number of these cases and how soon that could happen. We'll tell you about it at five. The National Archives is not sharing information about the classified documents found at President Biden's office and home with Congress. It is now saying that it needs to consult with the Justice Department before it does so. The congressional committee that is investigating those documents had set a Tuesday deadline for the archives to respond to a request for interviews. However, the archives says it first has to ensure it doesn't interfere with the special counsel's criminal probe of the documents. Acting archivist Deborah Seidel is also pushing back against accusations that the archives is treating Biden differently than former President Donald Trump. He said, she said rather, the archives did not publicly disclose its discussions with Trump about classified documents for nine months until the scandal was publicly reported. And get ready to hear a lot about the debt ceiling. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the United States will reach its debt limit tomorrow. What does that mean for your wallet? Not much, at least not yet. But if Congress doesn't settle on a solution, it could take a devastating toll on the U.S. economy. And as CNN's Karen Kafa tells us, it could impact your bottom line. 
The debt ceiling will be the talk of Washington until lawmakers on Capitol Hill can compromise and take action. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen starting a clock for Congress to either raise or suspend the country's borrowing cap beyond the current $31.4 trillion or risk an unprecedented U.S. default. Yellen wrote lawmakers on Friday to say the U.S. will hit its debt limit on Thursday, but the Treasury Department will take measures to allow breathing room until at least June. The last time a political debate pushed the U.S. to a brink of default was 2011, and the chaos resulted in the first long-term credit rating downgrade in the nation's history. To threaten to not pay America's debts would put all of us at risk. But new House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has indicated he may take a hard line on a debt increase, likely to satisfy some conservatives at the heart of his bruising battle for the gavel. Let's start paying this debt off and make sure the future generation has as many opportunities as we do. If Congress can agree on an increase, experts say interest rates on everything from your credit card debt to auto loans to mortgages could skyrocket as it becomes more expensive for the U.S. to borrow. The stock market could tank, hammering retirement accounts, and the Treasury Department might decide to delay or temporarily halt payments like Social Security checks, Medicare disbursements, and military pay to cover debts. And while Washington isn't panicking just yet, the White House has recommended that an agreement come sooner rather than later to avoid rattling an already uncertain U.S. U.S. economy. That was CNN's Karen Kafer reporting. Now, if you are looking to buy a used car, now may be a great time to do it. After record high prices over the last couple of years, the plunge is steep. Edmonds is saying that the average price of a used car last month was just under $30,000. That's a drop of $1,600 since April. And if you're shopping for a low price, make sure you do your research on the inventory. For example, some dealers have fewer Toyota RAV4s because they're in such high demand. So you will actually still pay big bucks if you want one of those SUVs. On the other end of the spectrum, a Ram 1500, we've seen folks save over 15% off of MSRP on Ram 1500s because there's a lot more inventory. Dealers are sitting on them. The age of the car is gonna make a difference too. Edmund says newer used cars are down just 5%. Cars five years and older are seeing a 15% drop or more. Microsoft laying off 10,000 workers. That is according to a security filing. The company says it's cutting costs in response to looming recession fears and changing customer priorities. In a memo to staffers Wednesday, Microsoft CEO said the job cuts represent less than 5% of the company's total workforce and that will, those layoffs will be completed by the end of March. Microsoft is just the latest company to reduce its workforce to cut costs amid economic uncertainty. Other tech companies like Amazon, Salesforce, and Facebook, parent company Meta, have all recently announced layoffs. We're looking outside with live cam, another pretty day. It's hump day. Hump day. We're halfway through <laughs> the week, and so far it's been pretty nice. It uh, has. The bluest of blue skies out there uh, as uh, we make our way into the second half of our week. Uh, temperatures, not so bad today. A little cooler than yesterday, but not by much. 74 degrees right now in San Antonio. Notice there are some 80s. Corpus Christi down to Brownsville, and it cools all the way down into the 40s as you get out towards El Paso and Marfa. 51 right now up in Amarillo. So a pretty big divide between the warm and low temperature here across the state has to do with a frontal battery that's working through. Eventually we'll all cool down and see some drier air. So we look at the bigger picture here across the country. There is some cold stuff up north, but not terribly cold. 32 Omaha, 32 in Minneapolis. It's 19 right now in International Falls. These fronts have not dragged down terribly cold air. It's been mostly Pacific air masses that just uh, cool us down a little bit, but not a lot. As we look at the weather headlines, low humidity today, gusty winds, that equals a fire danger for most of us. Showers on Saturday, possibility, we'll see a chance early in the day, and then we'll have some more fronts coming in next week. Could that mean a cooler end of the month? There's some indications that could be the case. Uh, it's been a pretty warm January so far. 74 degrees at the airport, clear skies, dew point is at 40, and we've got a north-northwesterly wind at 15. There's the satellite picture, and you can see the clouds right there. There is the front. It is quickly moving towards the Texas coast and clearing out our area, but uh, there is uh, quite a bit of weather for parts of Louisiana and Arkansas as you get up into Missouri and snow across parts of Nebraska this afternoon. Texas is going to be looking at some pretty good weather next couple days before again some changes over the weekend. We'll take another look at that forecast for you coming up in just a bit. 
Thank you, Justin. Coming up, Brennan and Harlan girls basketball game last night full of some big time shots. Larry Mears has the highlights with a little extra time as well coming up. A show that's focused on a movie mystery of titanic proportions. Could Jack and Rose really have both fit on that floating door in the Titanic moving? It's been eating at you for years. We have details on a scientific reenactment.